So by now, you probably know the Japanese and the Americans are coming this fall in Tides of War Chapter 5, battling out in the Pacific Theater. In the previous episode of this, we talked about which American weapons may come to the game and if you have not seen it, check the description below. But today, we are going to be focusing on the other side of the battle, the Imperial Japanese military. There are not much leaked info on the upcoming Japanese small arms, so this is simply my personal take on what can possibly be coming to Battlefield 5 in the near future. With the Battlefield franchise's love for including prototype weapons in this game, I will also follow suit and include a few that may be some cool additions to the game. So let's begin! The Japanese military at the time of World War II, or even in the pre-World War II era, explored some semi-automatic rifle options for their ground troops. They looked at a few weapons like the Czech ZH-29 and the American Pedersen rifle, but eventually they did not work out and simply went along with their standard bolt action rifles. Of course, with the Germans being one of the first to popularize the fully automatic assault rifles during the same time frame, the Japanese did not really have anything similar at the time. But that does not stop us from imagining to use some of those prototype weapons in the game. So let's imagine having the Japanese version of the Pedersen rifle. A bit of history surrounding this weapon is that John Pedersen, the designer, originally made this rifle for the US Army to replace the M1903 Springfield. He uses a 10 round M block clip and fires the 276 Pedersen round. Due to various reasons from the trial period, possibly some political reasons and funding issues, the T1E1 or the 30-06 Garand was chosen to continue development, which eventually dropped this rifle from consideration. Then Pedersen brought this design to the UK and was manufactured by Vickers in small quantities, but eventually that also did not end up in any major contract. So he decided to bring this gun to the Japanese who was also interested in semi-automatic rifles. It was then modified to shoot the 6.5mm cartridge shared by many other Japanese rifles at the time and has modified this to a rotary magazine instead of an end block clip. But as history showed, this was never adopted after multiple trials by the Japanese. Despite its ultimate failure, this gun brought along the idea that semi-automatic rifle could work and raised the bar for many of the newer rifles to come, one of which was the M1 Garand. Then this brings me to the next semi-automatic rifle. This is the Type 4 rifle, sometimes referred as Type 5. This gun is another experimental rifle, but it is one that may seem very familiar. It is essentially a copy of the M1 Garand by the Japanese. Basically, the Americans, German, and the Soviets were all replacing the bolt action standard issue rifles with semi automatic rifles. The Japanese were attempting to have their own as well, but instead of developing one from the ground up, they decided to copy the American M1 Garand. A few adjustments were made, of course. Instead of the 8 round M block clip, this uses a 10 round internal box magazine that is fed by two 5 round stripper clips. It fires a 7.7x58 Arisaka cartridge. They also added a few Japanese touches to the gun as well, like the Alisaka style sling, the tangent sights, and so on. Only around 200 guns worth of parts were found, and roughly half of them were assembled. But since these guns never truly made its way into the war, how about some that did? And we have been talking about bolt action rifles for a while, so how about the Type 97 Alisaka rifle? It is essentially a Type 38 rifle with a scope. But because Battlefield 5 always have scopes attached to weapons, let's just combine these two. The Type 38 rifle was a bolt action rifle that was first introduced in 1906 and were used in both world wars. Over 3 million of these were made up to around 1944. It was during the Second Sino Japanese War that the Japanese found the gun to be underperforming. It fired a 6.5x50 Arisaka cartridge, which was weaker than 303 British. 30 odd 6 of the American use, and a 7.92 by 57 Mauser cartridge. And that's the reason why they later replaced it by the 7.7 by 58 cartridge. This also led to the development of the other rifles, one of which is the Type 99 Arisaka. So during the Second Sino Japanese War, the Japanese found out that the 7.7 by 58 cartridge used by the guns like the Type 97 LMG and the Type 92 HMG were much superior to the 6.5 Arisaka cartridge. So they began developing a rifle that can utilize that firepower. So by 1939, the Type 99 rifle was born. There were several variants, but the short rifle was the most common variant. But the Japanese Imperial Army was not able to completely replace a rifle, which ended up being an issue as both the Type 38 and the Type 99 were being used at the same time. 
and when you have two different types of rounds being used, it created some logistical issues. Whether it makes sense to have both of these rifles in the game is hard to say. Even with the Type 99 being almost a superior rifle in every way, it seems like it won't do the Japanese justice for not having the Type 38 or the Type 97 in the game. The Type 97 was pretty much the exclusive sniper variant used. The larger caliber round and the increased muscle flash from the shorter Type 99 Arisaga barrel made concealments more difficult. And since the medics in the game have been getting a few bolt action carbines, the Type 44 carbine might just be a good choice for this class. Its design was based on the Type 38 rifle and was designed for cavalry use. It has a needle type bayonet that can be folded in at the bottom below the barrel. It was originally intended for cavalrymen to replace having both a Type 32 cavalry sword in addition to a carbine. It is also equipped with a quillion. It is basically a hook at the end of the barrel that is used in bayonet fencing technique to hook onto opponent's bayonet and then twist the rifle to hopefully disarm the opponent. It would be pretty cool to see some of these rifles being added. Anyway, that's it for the bolt action rifles. With the Japanese troops putting close quarter combat with bayonet one of their top priorities, I do want to see that bayonet charges with these weapons will be upgradable for either speed or reach. Alright, since we're talking about possible medic guns, how about SMGs? So let's start off with the only submachine gun produced by the Japanese in any substantial quantity. It would be the Type 100 submachine gun. By late 1937, the Japanese were trying to design their own submachine gun. Like the experimental Type 1 and Type 2 submachine gun. These were proved to be quite inadequate, so they decided to go ahead with a new design pretty much based on the German Berkman typed machine gun like the MP18. This would then be known as Experimental Model 3 and eventually led to the Type 100 submachine gun. By 1942, this began production but not in large quantities as the army was focused on adopting the Type 99 light machine gun. But by 1944, it was found that the submachine gun became highly sought after and they began mass producing it. At the same time, resources became more scarce and quality went drastically south. So this second batch became known as the Type 100-44 rather than the original Type 100-40 variant. The later variant does have a much higher rate of fire up to 800 rounds per minute and fires 8mm Nanbu cartridge with a 30 round detachable magazine. And since we talked about some experimental weapons like the experimental Model 2 submachine gun, it would be pretty cool to have one of those end up in the game. The Model 2 also chambers the 8mm Nanbu cartridge and was reported to have both 30 and 50 round magazine during its development. It also has an adjustable rate of fire from around 500 to 600 rounds per minute using an adjustable buffer system. And the Japanese also use a few other German weapons like the MP18, MP28, and the MP34. So I wouldn't be opposed if perhaps these were also included into the Japanese arsenal as well. Alright then, let's move on to the machine gun category. So earlier I mentioned the Type 99 LMG, but let's start off with a bit earlier in history. Let's start off with the Type 11 light machine gun. It fires a 6.5 Alisaka cartridge just like the Type 38 rifle. It was made all the way back in 1922 and was mostly used during the Manchurian incident, which was the Japanese invasion of China in 1931, and then the early Second Sino-Japanese War. Many of these were also captured by the Chinese troops and were used against the Japanese. This gun does have some significant problems. The hopper feed system gave this weapon a lot of trouble as it was not tolerant of dirt and often jammed in muddy conditions. Eventually, it was replaced by the Type 96 LMG. The Type 96 was basically a copy of the Czech ZB Model 26 and eventually improved to the Type 97 light machine gun, which was mostly placed on armed vehicles and then the Type 99 light machine gun, which was used by infantry. The Type 99 became the newer machine gun that would use the new heavier 7.7x58 Arisaka cartridge. It was able to fire 800 rounds per minute and had a 30 round top mounted detachable magazine. Interestingly, it was capable of mounting a scope but on the right side of the gun, and may even occasionally be used in somewhat of a sniper role. And Japanese being Japanese at the time, it was also able to equip a bayonet, but it was rarely useful. As you can see, the flash hider obstructs most of the length of the bayonet, and try swinging this 10kg gun around, I imagine it would be pretty difficult. As for heavier options, the Japanese does have a heavy machine gun that also fires a 7.7x58 cartridge, and that would be the Type 92 heavy machine gun. It was originally based on the French Hotchkiss M1914 and was first developed into the Type 3 heavy machine gun that fires a smaller 6.5mm cartridge. 
and since a heavier RAM was needed, the Type 92 was developed, which is basically a 7.7mm version of the Type 3 heavy machine gun. And it also has a lighter variant, which is the Type 1 heavy machine gun. Either way, we will just focus on the Type 92 for now. It does have a slow rate of fire at around 450 to 500 rounds per minute, and even got a nickname the Woodpecker because of the low rate of fire. It also takes a 30 round Hotchkiss type metal strip that sticks out on the side. If you have played Battlefield 1 and used the Hotchkiss M1909, then you probably know how this looks. So this could definitely be one of the major downsides of this gun. Okay then, next up is going to be a stretch. Since now both the British and the Germans are getting an anti-tank rifle, the Japanese might just need one too. This one is going to be much bigger and much heavier. It is a Type 97 automatic cannon. Oh my goodness, a freaking cannon. It is a 20mm anti-tank rifle that was first built in 1939. And just so you know, a 50 cal round is equivalent to 12.7mm. Supposedly, it was reported to be able to fire in full auto, but it could have been a malfunction or it was actually describing the fully automatic version which was the Type 98 AA gun. When this gun is fully loaded, it could weigh up to 150 pounds. Okay, we're definitely not getting one of these in the game. Anyway, eventually the tank armor just got thicker and these became obsolete just like all the other anti-tank rifles. Alright then, how about some pistols? First up, we have the Nambu pistols. But there are a lot of variants. The first one is Type 94 Nambu pistol. It fires an 8mm Nambu cartridge and has a 6 round detachable magazine. It was particularly popular among tank and aircraft crews since it was so compact. It was adopted by the Imperial Japanese Army, but not the Navy. There were some design flaws such as difficulty in reloading and unintentional firing due to the poor design of the breach. Then the more popular weapon came along and it would be the Type 14 Nambu pistol. Around 400,000 of these were made. It was the cheaper and improved version of the earlier Type A model. It also fires the 8mm Nambu cartridge and has an 8 round magazine. Just like all the other guns at the same time period, the quality went down significantly as the war progressed, but most of them were still quite functional despite being more cosmetically crude. As the war ended and the Americans were bringing back their war trophies like captured weapons, one of these pistols ended up with William Ruger who eventually built the Ruger standard base on his gun. Another semi-automatic pistol would be the Hamada Type 1 pistol. It was based on the FN Model 1910 Browning. Minimal design changes were made and it's essentially the same weapon. It is chambered in 8mm Nambu and has a 9 round magazine. Several thousand of these were manufactured and were mostly used in China, but most of the records regarding this gun's production were destroyed in the war. Last pistol that I think would be interesting to add would be the Type 26 revolver. It was made way back in 1893 until 1935, with around 60,000 of these were made. It is used a 9mm Japanese revolver cartridge which was rather unique. It is also double action only and may have had issues with firing accurately. It has a lot of other design issues like the cylinder being able to revolve from just about anything touching it or simply swing the gun around. This is essentially playing Russian roulette as you never know if the next round is actually empty or not in the heat of battle. But heck, why not add it to the game as this was the only somewhat prominent revolver the Japanese had during the war. Then the last category would be gadgets. In the Pacific Theater, the use of flamethrowers were prominent. So how about the Type 100 flamethrower? It was mostly used in Southeast Asia like the Philippines, Dutch East Indies, and Burma. Some Japanese even tried to use this as an anti-tank weapon roasting a tank crew as they did not have a lot of effective anti-tank guns. And talk about anti-tank, how about the Type 4 70mm anti-tank rocket launcher? You can think of this as a Japanese version of the M1 bazooka. It is also equipped with a bipod as it was designed to be used while prone. All they missed was the bayonet lug, I mean why not? Alright, jokes aside. Moving on next to the mines. The Type 99 mines are pretty interesting. It has 4 magnets on the side and you can stack them together to make bigger explosions. It can even be armed and thrown like a grenade. Dice please? Then we have mortars. This is only one of the two weapons other than the Type 99 Arisaka rifle that we know should be coming to the game. It is the Type 89 grenade discharger, which is also referred as a knee mortar by some people. It fires a Type 91 fragmentation grenade and does not explode from contact. 
It actually has a time fuse and is designed to explode while in flight. This is like the World War II version of the airburst. But aside from that, it can also fire in an impact detonated HE round which would act more like a traditional mortar. And the last explosive on this list would be the Type 2 Rifle Grenade Launcher. It can be attached to the Type 38 or the Type 99 rifle and a 30mm or a 40mm grenade can be fired from the end of the barrel. It would be pretty cool to be able to mount one of these to the end of the rifle for an alternate fire function. Last but not least, we will need to add bayonets to pretty much everything. Any Japanese soldier should be able to charge enemies with the bayonets. Some Japanese soldiers were reported to have the close quarter combat mindset so drilled down that they would charge enemies with their bayonet with an unloaded rifle. The bayonet literally became their samurai sword as they embraced that tradition. One more bonus weapon should be the gunto or the military sword. It may end up being an elite soldier melee option, but it should still be there. It is a staple weapon for a Japanese officer. The samurai era only ended in mid-1800s and the tradition carried forward with this new gunto. And that's it for the video. Are there weapons you want to see when the Imperial Japanese joins the fight? Let me know down in the comment section. If you like this episode, drop a like. If you don't, you know what to do. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified for my next video. Otherwise, thank you for stopping by and I wish you to have an amazing day. Catch you all in the next one.